Perfect. If you're unfamiliar with what figured maple is, here's an example. I also like that these boards aren't exactly straight on the edges. They're a little rugged and got a little bow to them. I think that'll add a pretty cool character once I put them on the wall, but you can see the figure, the what looks like tiger stripes. And then whenever you put a finish on it, Just spilled a bunch of mineral spirits in my studio, but oh well. Whenever you put a finish on it, it really sticks out. So there's a rough example of what a finish would look like compared to without a finish. Now in order to hang these maple boards on the wall, I'm using these drywall screws they're made to come together with a shorter screw. You put this in the wall and then you drive this through whatever you're wanting to hang and it holds it up. I'll be using five of these per board which should give me enough strength to hold up the guitars. In order to line these up I have to drill holes through the maple boards into the wall so that I have reference points whenever I go to hang the board I'll be able to put these in the wall, because you put these in before you hang whatever you're hanging up. So I'll be able to put these in the wall in the holes that I drilled through the maple board. So whenever it comes time to hanging it, these will line up with the holes already in the board and I won't have to guess. But I don't want to drill holes all the way through the board that are bigger than the screw or else the screw won't hold anything. So what I'm going to do here is go through these bits that I have and judge which one will give me enough room for the screw to go through and grab a little bit but where the screw head will be bigger than the bit so that the screw head bites onto the wood and pulls it to the wall and then I'm going to countersink them that was actually a pretty good bit, I'll leave that one out, that's the one I'll use then I'm going to countersink the screws just a little bit into the maple with a bit that is a little bit larger than the head so the head will go down into the maple but there will still be enough maple for the head of the screw to grab onto. And I marked it on the back of the board that way whenever it comes to hanging it, there's no chance of a pencil mark on the front or something. This board is 43 and a half inches long. I wanted five equal spacings on it. I shortened the length by measuring in on each end an inch and a quarter, which gave me 40 inches, and then divided by five, each space is eight inches. So now I will take this and put it up here, hold it, and then drill through, and drill holes in the board and then through the wall, and then whenever I take it down, I'll have the holes up here as my reference points for the drywall screws. So here you can see the drywall screws that I put in the wall, those white dots are those plastic screws that I showed you a little bit ago and then right there is where a stud 
is so I don't need a drywall screw there'll be a wood screw there and also where you see one missing there this is what I'll be finishing the figured maple with is this Minwax polyurethane I wanted to go with a clear semi-gloss rather than a matte or a gloss that way you get the depth of the figure but not the reflection that you would get with a high gloss finish Okay, now that these have dried from the dyeing process, it's time to sand them back. And I'm sanding with these 320 grit, uh, they're for orbital sanders, they're these little pads. But I'm just putting them on the bottom of a foam block and sanding them by hand. So it's just a way to make do, you know. I have my orbital sander, but it's outside and I don't really feel like running it in the house. It's easier to just use a hand sander, it's easier to clean up afterwards. So you can see I just use this block wrap it around it works <laughs> 